Hey, kia ora. Helen Brown's here coming to you live from Sun City in Arizona, where I am enjoying my spinach mixed berry protein powder, chocolate protein um, smoothie. Yes. Love that little thing. Oh, yeah. Um, what are we doing? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I know I was going to be on at six o'clock and I just woke up a few minutes ago and made a smoothie because I need the energy. Um, but you have had an incredible day. Um, if you've been following us on Facebook at all, you would see that Zephy got a bark box today. So I did go get the mail. I did make that trek. It was pretty warm out there. Um, got back here. We had a couple of boxes to unpack. Uh, and we did a live unpacking her bark box so you could see her getting in there and getting her toys. She is so funny. When she wants to get in there and get her toys, she is hilarious. Um, so if you missed that, it's in um, Zephy B's Great Adventures on her group and then I've also posted it to my own personal page so you can see it there. I was trying to figure out how to get it on TikTok and can't figure that one out yet. When you do a live, how do you get it across to TikTok? So if anybody knows, can you please let me know? I would love to get this one on TikTok if I can, but I don't know how to do it. I figured out how to put it as a, I think I did it as a reel on Instagram, I think. I don't know, but somehow Zephy's account on Instagram got shut down. Who knows? So I had to go and appeal the shutdown on that one because of her age. But it said that you could use it for a business or a pet. And so when you, you had the, they wouldn't let me do anything else until I put her birth date in. And then it says that you could use it, you know, for a business or a pet. And so I put her birth date in there and it shut me down because it said she was too young. So I had to hit the appeal button and do the, the whole ID thingy and everything else. So we will see what happens with that. Because um, that would be a bit annoying. It's just annoying when they do stuff like that and i'm like okay you said i could have them as a business or a pet yet you're going to shut me down anyway and you can see it as a picture of a dog and all the videos on here are pictures of dogs uh, <laughs> so. anyway let's get off that one ah, it's sunday it's the ah day the day of ah um, we had a great day today. Um, like I said, went and got the mail, got a nice surprise in the mail from friends of mine who sent me a card and a cookie. Um, yes, and that raisin oatmeal cookie went down very well. Thank you. Um, <laughs> like, oh, I like raisin oatmeal cookies. Um, and then we just basically, I ended up watching episode four of Star Wars, The New Hope which was the very first Star Wars movie that came out in 1977. And my husband was actually, his, my husband was actually at the opening of, um, of Star Wars, the original Star Wars, the very first movie back in 1977. And um, there are photographs of him and his friends in his parents' backyard there out by the swimming pool, putting on, um, I can never remember the name, you know, like the rubber mask things on, but it's actually attached to the face of the, they, um, and they were doing Planet of the, and they went all dressed as characters from Planet, Planet of the Apes um, to a Star Wars movie. And so they were doing all the um, facial pieces that get glued onto the face and everything else. And there's this great picture of them all lined up there um, going to the opening of um, Star Wars. So I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> so that's my little Star Wars story. I wasn't there, but Brad said it was a lot of fun. Um, so I got to so I saw that movie today and then I started on the second one. I was sort of like, I just feel like taking a nap. So I put that one on pause. I'll probably go back and watch the rest of it tonight or next weekend sometime. Uh, and so then I thought, okay, so I went and had a nap. And it's really funny when I go to take a nap because I Zephy was there and she wasn't gonna move and her head was kind of on my pillow. So I just laid down next to her looking her in the eyes and she hates being like stared at in the eyes. So she kind of tucked her head down a little bit down the side of the pillow. She's so funny. And um, and I read for a little bit, and then went and then went to sleep. I did have the timer on though. I had the timer set for five thirty, um, around five thirty ish, in case I did fall asleep. I didn't want to miss my six o'clock thing, and I did it anyway. <laughs> but that's okay. I said around six. I said around six. Um, and uh, but Sefi is hilarious when the timer goes off because when the timer goes off, she flies off the bed like she could be out to it. And the timer goes off and she just gets up and takes off out of the room and you don't see her for five minutes you gotta go looking for her <laughs> this time she went into her crate and she just laid there and went back to sleep um it's almost like i'm not getting woken up by this thing again so i don't know 
but anyway, finally got up and got my smoothie made. And so now I'm sitting here and enjoying it. And I realized what the time was like, oh, but I've just double checked. And as far as I can tell, my um, Amazon Explore Melbourne laneways is still on this evening at 7.45 Pacific time. So in about 20 minutes, oh, where's my phone? Oh, it's over there. Um, in about 20 to 30 minutes, I'll take Zephy for her walk um, because by then the sun will, oh, it looks like the wind's starting to pick up. The sun will be below the houses so it won't be as hot to walk out there. But we did get over 40 degrees Celsius today and it was, I think it was like 103, 105, somewhere around there today for Fahrenheit. So it got a little warm. It's 80 about 80, 81 inside the RV right now um, with the two ACs going. So that's not too bad considering the fact how an RV is constructed. Um, but yeah, it did, it did pretty well today. It did pretty well. And Zephy survived her time. I mean, when I I got in, I, when I got back from getting the mail, because I left, left her here because it's like 94 degrees outside at the time. And there was no way I was leaving her in the car by myself because I knew it was going to take me a few minutes inside and that was just too long. Um, and so I pulled up, I got out, I opened up the trunk. Excuse me, I'm just going to, yes, no, maybe. Oh, I hate it when you get that. Oh, excuse me. Allergies. They're still really high on everything. Um, dander, dust, tree pollen, grass pollen, grass weed, mold, all high, 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 high. And I'm like, great, I'm screwed. And then we've got the ozone pollution thing out at the moment as well. Um, and so I got back, opened up the trunk. I took out the um, the thing that I use when I put packages in and set that button. And when I set it by the door, I hear, inside the door. And I was like, it's okay, Zephy. I'll be right back. And went and closed the trunk and got the other stuff out of the car that I need to get out of the car. And well, I did consider going to Barnes and Noble again, but I put that off because I thought I still have puzzle books. I still have magazines to go through. We don't need another trip to Barnes and Noble. Um, so we avoided that. Um, and uh, so <laughs> she, yeah, I got this great big cry from her when I, I mean, when I got out of the car, I, there was nothing, heard nothing until I put the stuff down by the door and she was and when I opened up the door she was standing there looking at me she was eye level with me at that point um yes yeah, so I got an earful on that one about leaving her behind so um mm. but she since recovered because she did have a bark box to open so she was very happy to um to open her bark box so I think that kind of made up for it because she ended up getting treats out of it and um, yeah, the back box comes with bags of treats and this, so you kind of gotta put them in your teeth and rip them off while you're holding up your phone to, cause I totally forgot to take my little, take my little phone stand and, um, put that where we could keep the camera on the, on the box while I use two hands. So maybe one day we'll remember to do that. Um, well, good afternoon, Mary West. How are you? She says to answer. Okay. So tell your story. Question of the month is where are some places you have vacation during your lifetime? so far and any favorites and she says an answer to answer your question we have vacationed in many um we have vacationed in many here are a few hawaii australia dc i love dc dc to me is somebody did a really good job of planning and at night it is a completely different city if you've never been to washington dc at night you have to go the lighting that they do on the buildings and the trees and everything else is incredible it's a completely different atmosphere um, Vegas, Lake Tahoe, Ocean Shores, Seaside Disneyland. Oh, sorry, Seaside, comma, Disneyland, comma. <laughs> so Seaside Disneyland, there's one called Seaside, don't have none of that one. Um, Japan, Leavenworth, Nashville, Memphis, and I'm sure others, I'm trying to think of the others. I love all of the places we've been. Next March, we are going to Italy. Awesome. We are excited about that. I would be excited about going to Italy as well. Um, there's a few places in Italy I'd really love to go and experience because I've seen amazing photographs of that place. So, wow, that's going to be awesome. So now you've got time to learn some Italian between now and then to help you get around. You know, just, the, just the basic stuff like, hello, thank you, goodbye, where's the bathroom? You know, just those little need-to-know phrases, I need help. Um, do you speak English? Those sorts of phrases, always good phrases to have in your back pocket. And if you want to get, if um, I found this when we were... Um, 
traveling around Prague and Germany and the other countries that we went to, Venice, um, Austria and um, Budapest, was learning to say hello thank and thank you in their language and actually asking them, those that spoke English, oh, how do I say thank you? And they would tell you. They were happy to tell you. And so you'd say it back to them to make sure that you were getting the pronunciation right and they would correct it um, and then go, yeah, you got it. And so it was it was good to be able to say thank you in their own language to them, um, which, I, which you could tell by the look on their face that they appreciated the fact that you were taking time to learn their language. And we also learned to say hello and goodbye in their language as well. Um, but asking the locals, how do you say hello, goodbye, thank you, um, they really appreciated the fact that you were taking the effort to learn their language. And um, what I found was interesting was that um, we kind of got better service for just for doing something like that. Um, even when we were on the river cruise, we would ask the crew that was serving us for dinner or breakfast or whatnot where they were from. And um, those that were from a different country would ask them, how do you say thank you in your language? And I was like, what, what? You know, like that surprised them. Um, <laughs> Zevi just ran up to her bed and picked up her slobbery, slobbery mess ice cream cone. And she's now laying on the floor trying to figure it out. But we have taken the tags off now. So if you saw them on the thing, they had the tags off. Um, but you'll be interesting to see which toy ends up on the floor. Because I found her shark, which was her cash, her card shark from the last bark box was in the wheel, was in the foot well underneath the steering wheel. So I managed to get that out. And I tossed it in her bed and I walked out of the room and I came back later and it's sitting in the middle of the floor like it's not allowed in the bed. And so I picked it up and put it back in the bed before I went to bed. And I came out this morning and it's back on the floor, it was back on the floor again. So yeah. But when traveling, if you can take the time to learn, hello, thank you, goodbye, um, I need help, do you speak English? Those sorts of phrases to help you get around, where's the bathroom? That will help you get around that country. It makes a big difference when you can ask somebody in their own language how to do that. Um, even if you have to write it down phonetically um, so that you remember how to pronounce the words, um, that would make it, um, you know, and you have to put out your little notebook and look it up and so you can say the words to them. Um, but the fact that you are attempting to communicate with them in their language is huge. It's huge um, for when you're traveling to different countries and things, especially if you get off the beaten path and away from the current tourist areas as well. You've got to know how to communicate. Because <laughs> I discovered that um, we discovered in when we were in Budapest um, one evening we were down the we were over there for the Christmas market cruise and uh, we discovered um, the that was the that's the best time to go down the Christmas market is in the evenings because more stalls more booths are open um, and the locals are hanging out down there there's very few tourists down there in fact you know all the tours have been and gone for the day or whatever and uh, completely different atmosphere from during the day when all the tourists are in, are in town and so we experienced both with the tourists down there and made note of a couple of booths we'd like to go back to and see but when we got there those booths were closed at night because they were specifically designed for the tourists but there was a whole bunch of other booths that were open with local artisans that were um, for their wares and stuff that the um, that the local people were more interested in and there were a lot more food booths open as well and um, we came across one booth um, to get food and they had this um, this fish sandwich there and I was wanting to get it without the onion and this woman saw that I was struggling and came over and says, look, I speak both languages, may I interpret for you? I said, absolutely, I would greatly appreciate that. And so she was able to ask the vendor for me if they could remove the onion out of the sandwich, make me a fish sandwich without the onion in it. And the woman was like, oh, yes, yes, yeah, we can do that. Because she spoke no English, the person behind the counter. Um, so that was the only time that I really had any issues. One other time, this woman spoke to me in German and I just looked at her and she says, would you like me to say that in English? I said, I would absolutely love for you to say that in English, please. And then said, um, damn, I've forgotten the German word for thank you now. <laughs> but it was 10 years ago. Um, but I said thank you to her in German because um, I did ask her. I said, how do I say thank you in German? And she told me and I said it back to her. Um, but she was happy to switch to English for me. Um, but anyway, so when you're traveling, try to learn some of the languages, the basics. It makes a huge difference. Um, and then, you, and you know, if you are, um, especially if you if you are, if you are, your ancestors come from that area, it would be good to know some of the language of where you come from as well. So if you're doing a trip 
um, like in the foot in the footsteps of your ancestors, where you're going and you're visiting areas where your ancestors came from and learning the history. Um, yes, you're probably, you're going to end up with an English speaking guide, but you know it'd be nice to be able to say thank you to that guide in the local language as well. So um, the heck have you put under my seat? My foot just hit something. Oh. Piece of her treat has ended up underneath the table. Do not ask me how that got there. She's exhausted from playing with her cone. The cone's sitting here and she's just like sprawled out on her side now. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you're doing things like, you know, in the footsteps of your ancestors and being able to communicate with the local guides and stuff, and especially if you come across um, when you're doing some of them and you happen to meet up with somebody who is related to you in some way because they are part of the family that stayed in the area while you're part of the family migrated for whatever reason but you can find out stories that way as well um you know what were the times like why did they leave you know what was it like were they did they leave because of religious persecution did they leave because they wanted more opportunities um were they indentured um they had um, indentured slaves where the um the people would pay for your fare but you had to give them x number of years of service back to them when you got to wherever it was you were going and then it was considered your debt was paid and you were now free to go and do whatever you wanted so they had um, things like that that were going on during migrations and all of that as well but there's a lot of stories as to why people migrated um, some were um, the biggest one was religious persecution the next one was sort of like better opportunities because there were no opportunities left in their country um, and that sort of thing as well so it's all fun and games it's it's always interesting to go and find out the history of an area um more information about that area so that's why i'm looking forward to doing the laneways tonight in melbourne it's been you know almost 20 years since i was last in melbourne so and these laneways weren't a thing at the time when i was in melbourne so i'm curious to find out the history of it and see what's going on so i'll be able to tell you all about that tomorrow um, and then next Saturday, I am learning to make homemade Argentine ice cream with four ingredients and an electric mixer. That's all you need. Four ingredients and electric. You need cream, full cream milk, cream, whole milk, chocolate chips, and caramel topping to make Argentine homemade Argentine ice cream in an electric mixer. <laughs> so anyway, I am out of here. Go enjoy the rest of your evening. What did you do today? made you go ah, and just kick back and relax and um i may watch episode five tonight may finish watching i have started it so i may finish it um and see what how you know depends because oh actually i might not get time to watch it because my adventure starts at 7 45 and is 50 minutes long so i'll be finishing just after 8 30 and that's kind of like to be starting the movie especially since tomorrow is monday yeah but it doesn't matter because I get up at the same time every morning, no matter what time I go to bed. So it's the breaks. Anyway, I'm out of here. Go have a super fantastic sparkling evening. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Oh, I've got to pick, finish off my planner. Maybe I'll do that before we go for a walk and um, get my planner set up for next week. But have a super fantastic sparkling rest of your Sunday and we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow for Magic Monday. Hey, Conera. Do, 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 do.